from the creepy swamps deep in the heart of Cajun country, I welcome you to Fave Five from Fans, the podcast where I, Jamie Ray, your humble host, invite a friend of mine and his friend too to create a list of five of their favorite things that we have a shared interest in, be it movies, books, TVs, toys, or whatever. Our own unique Venn diagram of topics near and dear to our hearts. We then sit across from each other, or in this case, zoom across the interwebs to compare and contrast, dissect and disseminate our choices for you, the listening audience. We'll start off with honorable mentions, those selections that didn't quite make the Fae Five for good reasons or bad, and then we'll take our turns in veiling choices backwards from five, four, three, two, and one. You'll hear us discussing everything from alien invasions to zombie attacks, Rom the Space Knight to 80s slashers, Edgar Allan Poe to Stephen King, both literature and film adaptations. All that's left is for you to decide who's right, who's wrong, and will we still be friends after all this? I can't wait to get started, so please sit back, strap in, and get ready for this episode of Fave Five from Fans. We're out of booze here. There's more in the aerobics room. You know, this stuff isn't bad. Keeps you skinny, too. All it needs is uh, a little vodka. Greetings and felicitations, Podcast Universe. I am so thrilled to be bringing you another episode of Fave Five from Fans Deep in the COVID Kerfunkel. Today's topic is kind of an interesting one because we're not necessarily talking about movies or about books or tv shows we're going to talk about people and it's those people who were hacky hacky slashy slashy back in the 80s that's right i'm talking about our favorite 80s slashers and to do that i've invited not one but two resident experts to the plastic microphone studios first i'd like to introduce andy usaray us e right <laughs> us array uh from black shadow podcast and uh lots of other cool things andy welcome to the show hey jamie thanks for having me on it's a it's an honor to be on your show oh yeah. yeah you're making me <laughs> blush <laughs> i'm yeah, really me. excited to have you here because you are an 80s guy oh yeah definitely i mean me and Dave have a ton of fun talking about 80s horror on his on his Dave's Pop Culture podcast and also on his podcast from another world. So, so yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to this episode. Oh, awesome. Well, I thought about you today because for whatever reason, I decided to watch Night of the Demons. And that was always one of my favorite shows that the two of you guys did. So, oh, yeah. You know, and the things that Lee Anna Quigley can do with the lipstick case in that movie, I just, oh. It's, <laughs> <woo. laughs> and speaking of Phantom Dark Dave from Dave's Pop Culture Podcast, Dave, how you doing, man? Doing great now that I'm back. How are you doing, Jamie? Oh, I'm doing well, man. I tell you, if you'd have told me a year ago, that I would be doing a podcast where Phantom Dark Dave and Andy were on my show, I'd have laughed in your face. And <laughs> and yet here we are today talking about 80s slashers. Yeah. Well, you know how it goes, man. We are in the world of horror movies. And as Andy mentioned, we've lived here forever. And then ever since we've met you, you've been right there with us. We are all part of the podcast community and we have these conversations behind the scenes anyway. So it only made sense to put out an episode about it. Yeah. Let's just record it while we're talking about it anyway. <laughs> I love that. What we've decided on doing and we're calling it favorite eighties slashers, but it's actually going to be killers who were in what we would consider to be a slasher film. Okay. Now I have put one more restraint on myself to do this list is because I actually wanted to find the killers that were actual slashers. Um, so most of mine will be there and being there, we're only talking about a 10 year period. We may have some crossovers, but I'm really expecting we're going to at least have one or two that we're pulling out of the woodwork. <laughs> so to say, um, so before we get into it, Andy, as a the first guest, or as the new guest on the show, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and where people can find you and uh, all the cool things that you do. 
Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, so I've been a musician for a number of years. Uh, I was actually in a band with here on Randy from here on Mars. Uh, it's called Me and My Shadow. Everybody should go check that out. We have a band camp, and uh, you can probably find us on all the different player uh, apps or whatever. But uh, and I've been I did a, a podcast for a few years called Black Cat Shadow, and uh, Dave joined me as a co-host on that. So that was a really fun time. We got to interview a lot of cool people uh, that have been in some of our favorite horror movies and, um, and just talk about different topics, uh, different weird paranormal urban legend type topics. And uh, so I, I, you know, that's kind of like my background. Music is a big part of my background. So um, it's kind of taking a step back from the podcast, but uh, now I'm focusing on music and, uh, and I enjoy making uh, intros for people's podcasts. So that's pretty much it for me. Just, uh, making music, watching movies, you know, taking it day by day. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, I've, I've heard some cool stuff. Uh, that's that show, um, I don't know, Podcast from Another World or something. It, that's got some cool intro motion. You should check that one out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For my four listeners out there, because since I have two of them here, um, that's actually one of Andy's. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Dave? What is there to know about you that we don't know already? Uh, I love Monster. Wait, we talked about that already. I love movies. Okay, we talked about that already. I, don't know, I feel like everybody knows me by now. We're pretty much brothers at this point. But uh, oh, I don't know how many times we've talked about the fact that, yeah, Andy and I used to do Black Cat Shadow. And one of the biggest things is we did a lot of interviews and we tried to interview people from 80s movies as well and then that transcended over to Dave's pop culture podcast where Andy and I did our favorite 80s movies and we made an organized list where Andy would bring a movie to the table then I would bring a movie to the table so that was part of how this idea came along is Jamie you and I talk about horror and we did the episode with Neil where we did the 90s one and I'm like well we gotta do an 80s one I'm like I know the perfect guy I'm like we gotta get Andy over here because it's been a little while since Andy and I have talked 80s but I thought with having you in the mix as well like you said we're gonna have some differences across the table but you know what dude I'm not gonna lie if we all had the same five I'll be beyond excited I'm with you brother I'm with you <laughs> it's gonna be a fun podcast so I tell you I think we've got enough of that out of the way. If y'all are ready, I'm ready to get started. And I think what we'll do is, as Andy is the newest guest, we'll let Andy go first. So, Andy, I offered to let you have uh, two honorable mentions that just couldn't quite make the list. Um, how many do you have? Well, um, I have two times two oh, honorable mentions. <laughs> okay, there's some math there. <laughs> It's, it's so bitty. I, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, it, and uh, these, these honorable, honorable mentions probably won't be on anybody's top five, but I feel like they're just four killers that I wanted to, to spotlight a little bit because I think they're kind of unique and kind of interesting for people that are a fan of these type of movies. I think you, these are ones you should go check out. Awesome. We'll, we'll um, bring them on then, brother. So, and also, I guess with this whole topic, there's the caveat that it's, there will be spoilers, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, so. and the only restriction that we were talking about is that we are only going to talk about their movies in the 80s. So if you have somebody that started in the 70s, that's fine. But we want to talk, they have to have been killing in the 80s. Gotcha. All right. So my first honorable mention is going to be uh, Ricky Caldwell. And he's from a movie called Silent Night, Dead of the Night Part 2. And a lot of people probably know him from the meme Garbage Day. Garbage Day? Huh? No! And so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the meme where the guy's taking out his trash and then the guy comes up and, yeah, it says Garbage Day and shoots him. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty crazy sequel to Silent Night, Deadly Night. And if people don't know, that's the one with the killer Santa Claus. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so um, that one's a pretty that part two, like Ricky, he's just over the top. Um, it's, it's more funny than anything. Um, and then for my next one, um, it, it's a guy named Paul Andrews who, from a movie called Mortuary. Oh, and, good one. Um, and people will recognize the actor as Bill Paxton. There's a delicate balance to this. You've got to add just just the right amount of mixture. 
It's like being a good cook. So, if uh, so, if people want to see Bill Paxton in a early, in an early screen debut, check out Mortuary. Yeah, yeah. Watching that, you would never guess to the heights that he ended up going to. I mean, he was such <laughs> a beloved character actor, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So my next one is from a, a movie called Girls Night Out, and the killer is Barney slash Katie Kavanaugh. And the why I say the way the reason why I say slash is because you think it's Barney Kavanaugh the whole time, but it's actually his sister. So mm. it's kind of like a psycho thing going on there. But Katie Kavanaugh, I'm not Katie. And the reason why I wanted to point this one out, especially is because of the getup that the killer wears. Uh-huh. Uh, she is wearing a, uh, a bear ma- mascot outfit, like a high school, ma- like sports <laughs> mascot. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> so that's, it's really funny. Um, okay. So my last, an- my last honorable mention is a movie called Anthropophagus. And it's the killer. It's uh, they just call him Anthropophagus or Claus Wartman. He's basically like a cannibal killer, and but he's just really like he's like really super tall. And uh, George Eastman is the the actor that played him, and he's just really imposing. And he doesn't speak a word the whole movie, but he's just really scary. If you like Italian horror, it's a great like Italian type slasher to check out. So, oh, cool, yeah. Like it, it's a it's a giallo. Is that how they say? Is it got the it's bright not, red blood? Really, or? I wouldn't say it's a giallo. It, it okay. follows more in the traditional slasher uh, uh, format. I think since it came out in the eighties, I think it kind of, they tried to kind of cash in on the, on the actual slasher kind of trend that was kind of coming up. So it's not really like a, it doesn't really have a detective or oh, anything okay. like that. Okay. It's basically just people like stranded on the Island. They're getting picked off one by one by a crazy cannibal killer. Oh. Um, not for the faint of heart, I should say, because there's a couple of scenes where he's eating things that you wouldn't want to see a person eat. But <laughs> all right, well that's some that's some good ones, and uh, I've heard of two of those, so uh, got them down. I'll have to go check them out. Dave, those show up on your uh, your radar. You've seen them? I can't say that I have, although I've heard of all of them. Oh, okay, well, oh well, I, that's a lie. I saw one of them. Which one? Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, and that was a recent watch. And Andy was the first person I hit up because I was like, dude, have you seen this? And he was texting me, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's a fun, terrible 80s movie. And, uh, oh, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Oh, that's awesome. So in that one, that Santa was the killer in the first one. So is this another guy pretending to be Santa? So in part two, it's his brother that is the killer now, oh. the, the brother of the original killer. Oh, Jamie, got you. that movie, just so you know, Half of it is part one shown in flashbacks. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> he's basically, he's in prison, right, Andy? And he's yeah. telling the story of part one. Oh, exactly. And yeah. then he becomes the killer for part two. Wow. And so, wow. Uh, it's so bad, it's good. Wow, right? <laughs> that's, those are some good ones for sure. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's some great honorable mentions. Thank you for those, Andy. I'll uh, yeah. I'll either thank you or curse you later on after I watch <laughs> them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Dave, I've got a legal size pad here. How many honorable mentions do you have for us? Remember in the beginning when you said you were really hard on yourself and you gave yourself the strict amount of rules? Yes, sir. I did the exact same thing, so I'm only bringing one honorable (gasps) mention to the table. I'm doing you right on this one. Wow. I know. Who are you and what have you done with Phantom Dark Dave? Well, I like anybody else made my five and it was pretty crazy how much my list has almost stayed the same. Cause I was pretty sure about this. The only thing that I wasn't sure of was how many honorable mentions I wanted to bring to the table. And if my five and honorable mentions would switch around. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, I just had to go with the, the golden Jamie rule of, I love this, but it just didn't make the five. Got you. And I would not be surprised if it, this slasher was on either of your list. Okay. So my honorable mention is from 1981, The Burning, He's Cropsy. Now this camp had a caretaker, a really evil bastard. And his name was Cropsy. Oh, you. 
Yeah, so, he's on my list. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. He barely uh, missed making my list. Um, great, great film. Uh, tell us some more about it, Dave. Well, who is Cropsy? Because that's a uh, an urban legend. We could talk about it, or we could wait for Andy to bring it up on his list. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess if we got to wait for Andy, we can. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, great. Well, um, I actually have three honorable mentions, <laughs> and one of them I just added last night. My number three is from a movie called amsterdam have you guys ever heard of this one or seen this one yeah i've I've heard of it i don't i've not seen it yet yeah it's a it's a 1980 h dutch slasher film that literally takes place in the canals of amsterdam and it's one of the best dubbed versions of a movie like this that i've ever seen and it's all about this killer who swims in the canals and comes out and takes his victims and kills them. And he has a, like a big scuba knife and he, uh, you know, so it's, he's really a slasher and it's one of these things that they've got you, this guy in front of you that you think is the killer. And he goes all the way to the end. And literally in the last five minutes, they introduce who the killer is. And now you're like, Oh, okay. Big reveal, which I don't usually like in a in a movie and and you guys can comment on that fact i usually like to be able to say ah i if i'd have paid more attention i'd have known who that killer was this was one that they didn't really do it but i absolutely loved it because it was so different i mean the guy wears this big scuba suit and you know there's there's a woman who's like doing salvation army and she drops her pail and she reaches down to get it and he just jumps out of the water and grabs her and pulls her in he will surface Kill. 16 stab wounds, at least eight were fatal. And vanish without a trace. Four dead in four days. All I know is that something's got to be done. For the canals now run with blood. And then the scooper guys the next day cleaning out the canal finder. So anyway, good, good. Film. It's on, um, it's, it's on, um, Amazon. If you get a chance to watch it. Um, so that's Music to my ears, Jimmy. It's on Amazon. <laughs> All right. So my number two is going to be the killer Russ Thorne from <laughs> Slumber Party Massacre 1 and 2. Anybody have him? This is like slasher bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Russ Thorne. Russ Thorne. Bingo. <laughs> so the great thing about this is that um, – it's the same character, but in the first movie, he's played by one actor. And in the second movie, he's resurrected as someone else. So it's the same guy going after the survivor, but a completely different person. And he's got these, and I know y'all have seen it with the guitar, with the drill on the end of it. And he goes around singing, um, uh, Tokyo convertible. I think was the name <laughs> of the song or something. So a little thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to tell you that in the eighties, Russ killed 21 people between number one and number two. Wow. So Lily's been helping me out with the kill counts. So all props to Lily, Russ Thorne, 21 people. Uh, 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 uh. All right. And then my number one honorable mention is a movie that I've talked about before. It's The Final Terror. Do either of y'all have that one? No. Uh, Negative. It is a star-studded movie from 1981. The killer ends up being Egger's mom. Mom! who was um, raped as a young woman, had one of the people named Egger, 
and she has become a feral woman and lives out in the woods. And she killed six people in the movie, but they get her in the end with a tree. (laughs) (laughs) As they should. With a tree. (laughs) So those are my three honorable mentions. So if I'm right, that means there's 15 slashers in front of us. Potentially. Potentially. Okay, Andy, why don't you go ahead and give us your number five? All right, my number five, it's a killer from the movie Curtains. Um, the character, the actor, actress's name is Patty O'Connor. And uh, I, think, I think the main reason why this killer sticks out to me is just the mask that she wears. It's like the old hag mask, and it looks oh, really creepy. Yeah. Um, this was like one of the first slashers I kind of discovered once I was kind of getting into 80s slashers. And uh, just the look is really creepy. And um, there's some like, there's actually a scene where, uh, the killer's ice skating across a frozen lake to kill somebody. Oh. It's, kind of, it's kind of funny, but just I, I think I think what really put her on my list was just the mask, the look. Just yeah. is really really creepy. And her commitment to kill. I mean, you know, there's yeah. not many killers that are going to go out ice skating after you. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And what was her main mode of kill? Uh, she had like a she had like a sickle that she would. She would hack him up with, but then try to think of what other weapon is she had any other weapons. I, I think that was pretty much it. Well, that's a memorable one by itself. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, Mr. Dave, number five. Number five. And uh, this is one that used to be the honorable mention and actually took Cropsy out. And the only reason that it happened is because I had to give credit where credit's due. So first off, kudos for Russ Thorne because it did cross my mind just didn't write it down but you know what he wears too much denim for me well there you go (laughs) now you mentioned same character two actors right right I'm gonna flip that on the script I'm gonna mention my number five is played by the same actor two different characters and that is Mr. Jerry Blake and Gene Clifford I'm talking 1987 the stepfather and 1989 the stepfather part two (laughs) It's on my long list. Oh, yeah, that was a good uh, one. Andy and I covered The Stepfather originally. We practiced The Stepfather 2 and almost did that episode. Everybody knows I'm a sequel guy. I love The Stepfather 2 more than one, but I can't disregard the first one because it's where the story starts. But I love the idea of a stepfather killer who just wants to be appreciated and have the perfect family, even if that means he has to kill until he finds one. And Terry O'Quinn, his portrayal is beyond fantastic Mm -hmm. and, dare I say, the utmost convincing. Where are you, Steph? Come on, honey, it's all right. It's all a game, Steph, huh? Ali Ali home free. Come on, Steph. It was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, I mean, the guy's a Starfleet captain, and he still can't find a family to love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just, the death scenes, the creep factor, even just the opening of The Stepfather just lets you know that you're dealing with a serious slasher on your hands. And right. this is the kind of guy that he's going to take you out. And if you find out his secret, you're screwed. Ooh, you don't worth that. And so he obviously doesn't find him in the first film. And the second film, does he get love? Well, and that's the kicker is he gets love, but is it ever long lasting love? Yeah, yeah, and that's true. The reason why I specifically prefer Stepfather 2 over 1 isn't because there's anything wrong with part 1, but it does exactly what the sequel is supposed to do, where it ups the ante in every way, including a star stud cast. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Oh, good one. Good one. Well, my number five uh, is going to surprise you that it's all the way up at number five. But I am talking about the killer, Charles Lee Ray, better known as Chucky. Hi, I'm Chucky. Want to play? And Chucky only got one entry in the 80s and was only able to kill five people. But what a memorable performance Chucky had. Now, he went on to do 46 sequels. Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I lost count. But, but in the 90s, uh, up until recently, still churning them out, still doing uh, a very interesting job of them. But 
he just barely squeaks in there from 88. Um, how about y'all? Got some love for Chucky? Nah, he's all right. Oh, oh. <laughs> did you see the remake? No, I haven't seen that one yet. No, I haven't, I haven't got a chance to either. I heard that they've kind of... I've seen it. You have? Yeah, did I saw like the theater. It? Oh, wow. It's one of those things where I, I wasn't happy that they remade it because of the way they remade it. Mm-hmm. So I went in with no expectation. And I got to say... It wasn't love or hate. It was straight down the middle five. I didn't regret seeing it. I appreciated the new take that they did. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just had too much love for Brad Dourif. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. But uh, um, it's definitely worth a watch. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, if that's got number five out of the way, I'd say let's get down to number four. Andy, hit us with your number quattro. All right, so my number four has already been mentioned. It is Cropsy from The Burning. Poor and, Cropsy. Uh, yeah. Um, I think this is, yeah, he was one of the, I think, I think if, I don't know why he could have been like, I could have seen some sequels to this, you know, I think mm-hmm. if the, this came out after Friday the 13th. So I don't know if it was just kind of like overshadowed by Jason Voorhees, probably since they were both kind of camp slashers. They, they kind of had, the, they didn't really have the same thing necessarily but i I really like crops you just like his yeah. look um just the method of like you know hit, killing people with the garden shears and then you know at the end he had that giant flamethrower thing that was really cool so yeah yeah no i i agree dave let's hear from you because um he's my honorable mention yeah <laughs> give it out man yeah. dude so andy introduced me to this movie and when I watched it, I was blown away by it. Like, I couldn't wait to watch it again. I thought, and, and like Andy, I was like, why do we only have one movie with Cropsey? Mm-hmm. Cropsey, he has the devastating backstory of being a horribly burned victim because he was the camp counselor, um, but no one liked him. And it was just a prank gone wrong. And, dude, if anybody hasn't seen that movie, you need to because if you like slashers, he is pure definition of a slasher, dare I say, especially in one scene. And just to see Jason Alexander with that head full of hair. With hair, yeah. You know, and we're not talking about the McDonald's commercial either. <laughs> <laughs> TLT. You know, I don't know why it was, but man, I, I felt so bad for the guy, you know, because then he spent five years in the burn ward and they basically just tell him, well, just you know, you got to forgive those kids because, you know, kids will be kids. I was like, oh, hell no. And what's the first thing Cropsy does when he gets out? I'm going to go murder a prostitute. That's right. (laughs) Little Jalo move, to be honest. I I know. What a way to tell society you are back on top, brother. (laughs) Uh, Super Gus actually introduced me to this movie. And uh, when we talked about summer camp on my very first uh, real episode, uh, it was on that list. And I- I've loved it ever since. I've actually watched it again and I bought the Arrow film uh, version of it. So it's uh, it's got some – I haven't watched it yet with the director commentary. But if I do and I get some nuggets, I'll be sure to share them with you all. Well, I'll tell you, when you guys mentioned on the episode, I was fist pumping the air. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, then, Dave, why don't you give us your number four? My number four – has kind of been mentioned, but not mm-hmm. so specific because we talked about the sequel. My number four is Billy from 1984, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> What's there to say, man? Uh, he's a, a kid who sees his family get murdered by a guy in a Santa Claus suit, spends his whole childhood in a Catholic orphanage, turns 18, goes out into the real world to get a job. He works at a toy store. And what happens? They make him dress up as Santa Claus on Christmas. He stumbles into the back room, sees a couple going at it. It gives him flashbacks and when his parents were murdered. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, sparks a murderous rage. And now he becomes the killer Santa Claus himself, even if it's after our love, Linnea Quigley. I know. Oh, poor girl. Such a cool Christmas horror movie. Oh, and the, what if they make like four of those or five? There's five for sure. Wow. Five's the toy maker. So, <laughs> but oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to say, just definition alone, again, with Slasher is, yes, you can use a knife all the time or you can use your environment. And anything from stab, poke, chop, chop to antlers, he's got you covered. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Well, cool. Well, uh, my number four is going to be kind of high up, and I think it may surprise y'all. And this man had a very prolific career in the 80s. He had not one, not two, but five movies in the 80s. 
And he's another burned person. I'm talking about Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. 30 kills across five movies. Impressive. Yes. <laughs> and that's you respectful. Know, all with five, all with five fingers. So it makes you wonder if that's why he did it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Freddy is, uh, is, has a special place uh, on this list for me because, you know, I, I really, really enjoyed the first movie. And then the sequels after that, um, they became more and more campy. And it wasn't until I was older that I realized what they were doing with that, you know, instead I kind of just thought it was kind of bad acting or whatnot at, at first. But now that I look back at it, I was like, you know, he was really taking that character uh, in a way and, and almost thumbing his nose at the rest of the, the horror movie community and, and making him, you know, a funny dopey uh, invincible guy. And uh, now in respect, when we watch him, I'm, you know, I'm very impressed with him. No, I love Freddy Cougar. Yeah, I love Freddy Krueger. Um, didn't make my list, or else I would have chimed in quick. But you can't not think of Fred Krueger when you think of slashers, because he was the Springfield slasher. Exactly, he was, he was a killer as a living human. He was a killer as a burned dead man, and he haunts your dreams. I mean, how terrifying is it that you literally cannot run away from sleep? Right, you can't, no matter what you try. And he's the only guy who can make that sweater look cool. <laughs> i don't know i've seen some female cosplayers that do a pretty good job of it but uh <laughs> well is that cool or is that something else <laughs> it might have another word <laughs> yeah no i i agree i mean yeah freddy is probably one of the mo- probably the most iconic you know slasher from the 80s i remember like as a kid in the 80s like it was all freddy freddy yeah. everywhere so yeah you got to give him credit he had to come up on the list. Um, if nothing else, just for the, the multiple times in the 80s that he had movies come out. He was just in the perfect spot, you know. Anybody that can be in a docking music video wins. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Well, that now brings us to number three. Andy, tell us your number three favorite 80s slasher. All right. Number three is... Um... And this guy doesn't really have a name. He's just known as the monster from a little movie called The Fun House. Oh, yeah. Creepy. Yeah. And I think I think the thing that I really love about this guy is he's wearing the Frankenstein mask, you know, through the first part of the movie. And so, you know, it's already kind of it's already kind of creepy. But then when he takes the mask off, then you see his real face. And that and that just makes it even uh, it's even scarier once he takes his mask off. I just love that concept. Um, so he, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I love monster movies. So this kind of, uh, this, this like combines my two favorite subgenres, slasher, m- slashers and monsters. And you got a two for one combo right there. And then sprinkle a few clowns in there for good measure. <laughs> yeah. Can't trust those carnies. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> so Dave, how about a number three? So, I love your show because my number three normally does not get the love and respect that they deserve. But on this show, this is not the first time that you're going to hear about Angela Baker from yeah! Superway Camp 1983. <laughs> oh, okay. So I got to tell you, Angela stepped up one more ring on that ladder. She's my number two. Awesome. Yeah. So you go ahead, please. Let me tell you, I love Sleepaway Camp wholeheartedly. It is one of the greatest summer camp horror movies. Another reason why Cropsy didn't make it is because I wasn't going to put two summer camp slashers on here. Hint, hint of who else is not on my (laughs) list. But what can I say? A character with a messed up past and a messed up present. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And just steering away from loving that whole movie – the motivation behind Angela's killings is insane and it comes out in the death scenes. Yes. Yes, it does. And Angela was quite prolific. And we love Felissa Rose. (laughs) Yes, we do. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. She's so awesome. In the first movie, um, just, I mean, and then Miss Springsteen did a great job following up with two and three. She made the character her own. 
Mm-hmm. She really she did. Know Felissa Rose, but she was great. And I didn't track down the numbers, but I'm, I know part two was in the eighties. Was part three in the eighties as well? Yes, it was. Uh, yep. Yep. That's a, that's a big body count. Yep. Yeah, she, she killed four. Okay. So she is listed as killing 44 people. Okay. But I have to take umbrage with one of those because they list, uh, from the first movie as her having killed with a curling iron. Mm. You know who I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. And we know that she didn't die. Exactly. And so it's Judy, 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 uh, (laughs) because Miss Karen Fields later on created a YouTube video where Judy has now got her life ticked together and is like a sociologist or a, a therapist. Um, and then we learned that she really didn't get it back together. <laughs> so <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to see it, it's out there. Um, last time I saw, or the first time I saw it, Gus had told me about it. We all know super Gus is the super fan of sleepaway camp. Yes. Every um, Friday night, right? Every Friday night Love he it. watches that movie. <laughs> and one day when we do in cons again, uh, and she's at one, I'm dragging him to a con. She has got to meet her super fan. Yeah. Can I say, Jamie, <laughs> I've heard you often say this, and usually I, I'm on board with you, but I think you'll agree that this is the exception. Usually you don't meet your idols, but I think Felissa Rose being the sleepaway camp idol for Super Gus will be just the most exceptional experience. Yeah, well, and, and always there is an exception to the rule. And I've actually had a lot of good experiences. I, I will say, I know I'm a little jaded there, meeting George Romero did oh. not disappoint you know i'm glad was, you got to meet him when you did mm-hmm. he was uh he, he was something else he really was and and not just because of what he did for horror and for zombies but just just all around what he did for filmmaking you know you can't we wouldn't have the gorilla style that we have now it hadn't been for him but uh no angela back to is such a great choice bravo sir she she again was one of these killers who you really felt for uh you know, because she was not the person, she didn't choose this. She didn't put it on herself. She had it thrust upon her and, and really had no way out. And she tried not to kill. I mean, the first guy, she just, you know, boils alive. Um, so she, <laughs> 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 but, but uh, go ahead. I love it because you're hundred percent right. Like it makes you wonder if everyone had just left her alone, that might've just been summer camp. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I've been to summer camp when I was a kid. And of course, there were always cliques and there were always the mean girls. But I don't ever, I don't think in real life, everyone except for one person would be a total, you know, butthead to someone. Maybe I'm I'm living in a bubble, but boy, everybody was rude to her. Everybody was, even Mel, you know? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's. Such a great call. Such a great call. Okay. Well, then I guess that leaves me to give you my number three. Someone very near and dear to my heart. I'm talking about Michael Myers. Who in three little films in the 80s was able to kill 38 people, including a good old crawfish ball in Halloween 2. <laughs> <laughs> Michael is really one of the best slashers. I think he's always got a knife. You know, sometimes he just may lose his and picks another or upgrades along the way, but really love me some, some Michael Myers. After the first one, I know that it kind of veers into some kind of a little bit strange territory. Uh, number two makes him Lori's brother through just a very small little window of cinema time. And then we have number three come out and it's not even in the Michael Myers list. And then you get four and five right before the end of uh, the eighties, but still he always has a great place in my heart. So go ahead, Andy, give us your numero duo. All right. My number two is Jason Voorhees. But which one, which one you might ask? Cause there was a few in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say my number one is Jason from part three in 3d. Wow. Good uh, one. I think that, I think I just, that I just part three has a soft spot in my heart. I think because that's the first one that I saw 
And that's the first one that he gets his mask. And it's kind of the first one where he, they really kind of get his look down to kind of what it is in the next couple of movies or something. But, uh, so. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, <clears throat> the Voorhees family of killers is on my list <laughs> at, at number one. I want to chime in with you, man, because, uh, my favorite Friday the 13th is actually part two. And though it's not on my list, I love potato sack, Jason killer. It's mm. awesome. I love the representation from the town that dreaded sundown. And you know what? You and I are getting closer and closer because I did not know that I was not alone in the world of love and Amy Steele. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. So that, awesome. Like mm. probably close to being my favorite final girl. Of all. Oh time. yeah. Well, we, uh, we are actually doing a final girl list, Lily and I, and uh, she is on there. And the whole thing about Final Girls is the ones who make the smart decisions. Yes. Even if the decision doesn't come out or play out right. But if they had the making, right idea. Exactly. You know? Oh. And it kills me when, you know, I'm, I'm watching Lock and Key right now. And I, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. It's a great show. I, I love it. Chris Rowell and, and Joe King and all those guys are doing a wonderful job with it. But there's a scene where there's a killer and the mom gets the gun and she's like holding it on the killer. And then they just kind of come into the room and knock people down or walk right up to her and smack it out of her hands. And I'm like, I literally screamed, no, (laughs) you know, because you gotta be smart. You know, you gotta shoot, at least shoot at them. You have nothing else, but just, uh, smart. You know, it's, we were ruined with Lori Strode. Because, you know, you start so early with such a great final girl. And then she evolves into a final mom, you know, which is like, I guess, one of those Power Ranger morphism things where they, <laughs> <laughs> this is not my final form. But um, you, it, you've got to have a great, smart final girl. And Amy Steele really was one, you know. No spoilers if you haven't seen it, you know. <sighs> But what she does at the end to survive is literally amazing. All right, Andy, thank you for that number two. Um, Dave, what do you got? If I wasn't so stuck in my ways for my number one, my number two was a high contender. And Andy knows specifically that I love this movie. I'm talking Alex Hammond, 1980 prom night. Mm-hmm. Little Birdie told me you just rewatched that movie. You know what? That little birdie is beautiful. I love Prom Night. I can't watch it enough. And I gotta say, we've mentioned a killer who has so much emotion involved in him. Just the tragic backstory to the reason that they're killing now, and even the ending sequence of the discovery of the killer and you see the true sadness that boils through of, yeah, they're a bad person. They shouldn't have been killing, but the person is torn up inside and this killer dressed in all black, black ski masks. They're aggressive. They're young enough to be full of energy. Anything from stabbing you with a shard of glass to chopping your head off with an ax. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Leslie Nielsen was there to save everyone. (laughs) (laughs) I well, Dave, I, I guess I have to say that he, that um, Alex is on my list too. But of course, everybody knows what number that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that's a great pick, guys. Uh, I actually just watched Hello Mary Lou Prom Night Two last yes. night. Oh yeah, it's a good, great. One. Oh yeah, I hadn't watched it in so long, and I I really really enjoyed it though i don't think it had much to do with the first one at all (laughs) (laughs) do you know something i love about all these 80s movies isn't it great how many 25 year old played uh high school seniors (laughs) 25 hell i think one guy was like 32 (laughs) (laughs) benefit of the doubt but he had some uh, vietnam sticker uh patches (laughs) on his vest (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, but I really enjoyed that one, uh, especially Michael Ironside gave a, a great performance in that film and Prom Night 2 as the principal, you know, yes, the, yeah, yeah. the original boyfriend who turned out to be a cat. But no, that's a great movie. So, um, all right, well, we covered my number two already, Angela Baker from Sleepaway Camp. And 
your number one, Andy, Alex Hammond from Prom Night. That'll give us one more from Phantom Dark Dave. Hey, everybody knows Michael Myers is my favorite boogeyman. Call him my favorite slasher. Call him whatever you want. But I'm going to break the rule right now and say this. Dare I get away with it? I love Halloween 2 more than Halloween 1. Really? I love both of them. I've always Uh said together they are the perfect horror movie. But you know what? I would have never said this. If I had just like when you mentioned, like with the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, of mm-hmm. it's part one forever. I don't like what the rest of them do, but then you grew to accept and understand why. Level playing field for me. Like you didn't mess with part one. Like those were fighting words, mm-hmm. and and much love for John Carpenter. But what Rick Rosenthal uh, was able to direct, and John Carpenter and Deborah were able to write the script for the the powerhouse that is Donald Pleasance in this movie. And I love oh, yeah. Dick Warlock as being the first person to be like the actor and the stuntman to play Michael Myers throughout right. and ramped up all the death scenes. But dudes, uh, there is something so creepy about a dark and desolate hospital in the eighties on Halloween night. It was the perfect atmosphere with Alan Hallworth's um, soundtrack to accompany it. And I got to say that Michael Myers He's deadly with a hot tub. He's deadly with a scalpel. It doesn't matter, but he will crush your skull with a claw hammer. And to me, that just, that puts you right at the top. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that always sticks out in that movie has nothing to do with Michael Myers. It's the kid who comes into the ER with the razor blade stuck in his mouth. Cause he, oh, yeah. you know, I don't like, Oh, that's every per- parent's nightmare. And here she is walking him in. Okay, honey, don't, you know, and you know what's so funny about that is last time I watched it and every time you're always wondering like what happened to him and then yes as a parent I'm like oh my gosh like they're really saying that I can't think of it right now but I, Andy I feel like I've talked to you about this before wasn't there an 80s movie we reviewed where at the end the old man said he was gonna just go ahead and put like razor blades in the apples or the no, candy? no that's that's night of the demons that's the one I just there finished watching yeah so there it the is wife- that- the wife makes an apple pie because he yes. had so many apples left over. And then his throat just starts. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so we're all right. And think about it. I think that kid must have went to that house. I think so. Oh, you know, <laughs> they exist in the same universe. Yes. Oh, man. Mind blown. <laughs> you know, I, I will say, though, is that I always used to think that one and two were the perfect film together. And it wasn't until watching it with Lily that that whole Michael Myers is her brother's thing kind of, you know, in that friends episode, when they tell you the girlfriend has an annoying laugh and the glass shatters and, you know, well, when she told me that I was like, Oh yeah. And I heard the glass break and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I guess I kind of get you with that. So we're not going to watch four five, six, seven or eight, you know, (laughs) (laughs) if you already can't take it. (laughs) Yeah. But they do, they do make, it's just like Friday the 13th, one and two, you put them, you watch them together. I, I, the way I feel, you know, there's, there's all just transition right between them, you know? So, oh yeah, great. Well, whew, okay then. So for my number one, we will once again, talk about the Voorhees family. That's right. They were by my list, the most pro- prolific killers of all. Uh, I guess the family that slays together stays together. Well, no, <laughs> never mind. She she's dead. Anyway, so Miss Voorhees killed ten people in the first movie, and then her baby boy Jason killed a hundred and one people from number two to number eight, which came out in eighty nine. Just squeaked onto the list. So for me, with a kill count, the Voorhees family comes out as number one. And I just love the fact that that was really one of those movies that you kept watching and going, hmm, who's the killer? You know, who's who's the killer? And then you see the, the crazy lady and you're like, no, that can't be her. And then she starts talking out the side of her mouth in a little kid voice. And it's just like, okay, buckle up, baby. It's a bumpy ride, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then to just take that and then turn it into number two and bring the original love of my life, Amy Steele in. And uh, then come, you know, come in and put the hockey mask on him like you love so much. And then just to keep changing it, you know, 
and then of course we, we jumped to my favorite Jason X, but I can't talk about it. Cause it didn't take place in the eighties. If we're going to talk about Jason X, we have to have Neil on here. Yeah. <laughs> um, game mine, over. The game over. Yeah. Cause we've already talked about the Vori's family. So I'm going to tell you, I didn't have an honorable mention, but there is one thing that I have to say, uh, one movie that I have to bring up from the 80s. They're not slasher killers. There's three of them, three of them working together to kill these people. Um, and they do it from, well, one of them has a, has a, these uh, cuts the guy's throat. Another one um, electrocutes the janitor. And um, I am talking, of course, about Protector 1, 2, and 3 from Chopping Mall from 1986. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are probably my favorite independent killers <laughs> from the 80s. Awesome. Oh, what a great movie. <laughs> what a great, and it's got Tabasco in it. <laughs> if you ever watch the scene where they're in the diner and hiding out from, uh, for the pizza place, there's there's like prominently displayed a Tabasco bottle right on the table in front of them. They just uh, don't make malls like they used to. No, they don't. Not no. an orange Julius to be seen. Mm. <laughs> wow. Well, we, we had some good crossover, but we had some really great unique episodes, uh, unique killers as well. Um, I'm really, really glad we got to do this. Um, I feel like it's yeah. over too soon. It I, always I, we, happens. We should have made it a favorite ten, a fave ten list. <laughs> well, you had to change the name of the podcast. All right, that's true. <laughs> so there's some killers that we didn't talk about, and I, I think if you guys got a minute, I'd like to bring some of them up, and get some of your thoughts on them. Jenny Wainwright from Happy Birthday to Me. Mm. You know, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she was yeah. she was real good. Frank Zito from Maniac. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, another another killer. Let's see. Axel Palmer from My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, I'm surprised that nobody mentioned that one. Yeah. Well, especially he, you. <laughs> well, that one just kind of like didn't quite make the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to love a guy who kills with a pickaxe. You know, oh, yeah. with a name like Axel Palmer, if he wasn't going to make it as a killer, he could have been the lead singer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Axel yeah. Palmer. Um, so... Another one that I didn't get a chance to watch, but I remember liking it a lot, was uh, Franklin Harris, played by Richard Lynch in Bad Dreams. Do you remember that one? So this is a, this. Oh, you know who Richard Lynch is right from Invasion USA. Okay, you need to look. Yeah. Well, Just first you of all, like Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's about a young girl who is uh, part of a like a cult. And the cult leader is, I may get the movie wrong, but he, he goes to kill everyone and, you know, drink the, the, and then burn them all. Well, he dies, but she survives. And then he starts coming back to her in dreams. And it's, um, uh, hence bad dreams. Um, <laughs> don't even remember how it turns out, but, uh, I remember enjoying that movie a lot. Also, so you can get- only have two nightmare killers. You know? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, have either of you seen Death Spa? Uh, yes. No, yeah. I haven't. Oh, that's a good one. You need to see that one. Andy, Most... you know what I'm talking about, huh? Yeah, it's like a haunted gym, right? Exactly. It's <laughs> haunted, haunted by the ghost of the current owner's dead sister, who the owner is played by um, Captain Kirk's son mm-hmm. from Star Trek 2 II and 3. David. Yeah, yeah David uh, Merrick. Um, and it's got an interesting because she's dead, but she's still killing people. Ken Foray is in that movie. Already good. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. And probably the last one that I wanted to bring up, get your thoughts on, was Buffy and Muffy St. John. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 This one was really close to making my list, mm-hmm. but I would have had to make a very hard argument in its fact because, spoiler alert, no one actually dies in the movie. Yes. You know, yeah. and that's such a great twist to it. <laughs> you know, not just that, but that she's playing her own twin sister who mm-hmm. doesn't exist. <laughs> but she, in fact, has a twin brother, right? Yep. That's so cool. Oh, yeah, dude. Crossed my mind, too. I was like, can, uh, man. Uh, 
Yeah, there were so many good ones, so many interesting ones. You know, we didn't even touch on like the Children of the Corn or or oh, Psycho okay. Two or Dress to Kill. Can I throw one your way? You go, please. Okay, so I didn't include this one in my honorable mentions because I felt in my heart I should draw the line between good guy and bad guy. Uh huh. And we know the eighties were were big for horror movies and as many sequels as you can pump out, whether they're good or not. And <laughs> I have to bring a little bit of trauma love to your show again because the Toxic Avenger was so close to my list, except I didn't want to call him a slasher because in my mind, he's a hero. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Maybe Sergeant Kabuki, NYPD, would be a slasher. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) But seriously, man, Melvin. Oh, Oh, God. Such a great character. Yes. You know, such a great character. And God, what Lloyd has done. Uh, Okay, another perfect example of go ahead and meet your idol. Him yes. and Debbie Roshan were just, oh, such a pleasure. The fact that you've met Debbie Roshan, mm-hmm. mind blown. <laughs> I'll show you a picture of me with her. Please do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, you, you're right, though. I don't, I don't talk about trauma enough on this show. You know, I'm, I'm, go ahead, say it. Say it. Spank me. <laughs> I, no, I was just going to say, there's your other episode coming. <laughs> the day you, you do a top five, automatically listening. Yeah, I'm thinking that's got to be a three way with Jenny, though, right? right. If she if she well, hears you on a show, oh man, I don't want to be the person that tells her you she didn't make it. <laughs> oh, anywhere there's trauma, I'll bring her along. <laughs> that's your trauma sister, right? There it is. <laughs> wow, God, I, I'm trying to think of something to make this last a little bit longer, guys, because this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. So I, I want to pick up. Uh, we got to come up with another three way. Uh, three a, a fave. I don't. I need to come up with a good name for having three guests at the same time, a fave 15. That's what we'll call it. Cool. Yeah. Well, great. Well, before we end up, uh, Andy, um, is there anything else, anything you want to tout? Um, anything that's come to mind before we, uh, call it a night? Well, thanks Jamie for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. It was a blast. Um, the only, the only thing I would say, you know, you can, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter. Um, just go to at, look me up at Black Cat podcast. Um, you'll see my name, Andy Ustry, on there. I'm on Instagram. Just look my name up, Andy Ustry. It's spelled U-S-S-E-R-Y. And I uh, love doing podcast intros for people. So if anybody out there has a podcast or thinking about doing a podcast, you're like, you know, I just need a good intro for my my podcast. Hey, I'm your guy. Well, hit me up. We'll, you know, we'll chat. All right. And Dave, what you got going on? What's coming up in the near future for the podcast from another world? Yeah, man. So podcast from another world, it it bounces around, right? I do old B movies and then I do horror movies that just heavily inspire me. Then I bounce back and forth. Recently, I did an episode with the Amityville Horror with Andy. So if anybody likes him here, go check out that episode. You can find it on the Terrible Terror podcast feed. Search for podcast from another world. I'm every other episode and Andy was on the Amityville Horror. And in the future, he'll be on there for part two, which is an 80s movie. Uh (laughs) I just listened to this, guys, and y'all were fantastic. If any of my other four listeners out there or, or trust me find this episode and listen to it because you guys were great you covered some really cool stuff about that movie and about the books too oh thanks yeah we love the feedback man and seriously anybody out there listening come find me on social media i'd love to engage with you if it involves horror movies or classic movies i'm at dave underscore phantom got a lot of cool episodes coming out that i can't wait to drop featuring more of our sip network brothers amen Amen. And speaking of SIP Network, brothers, you and I are both part of the Slightly Irregular Podcast Network. And we're going to talk about them in just a second. But first, I would like to once again thank both of y'all for joining us for this episode of Fave Five from Fans. And to thank all of you out there in the podcast universe for listening to us. We love putting on the show and continue to release episodes every Friday. You can find us through the AOC Podcast Network. Or subscribe to us via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podbean, and really anywhere you catch a podcast. Please review us and give us a five-star rating whenever you listen to us so more people can hear about Fave 5 and we can continue to grow the show. We'd also love it if you interact with us on Twitter at Fave, the number five from fans, on our shiny new website, www.fave5fromfans.com on our Facebook page, 
and on the gram, as the kids say. We here at Fave 5 from Fans are excited to be a part of the Slightly Irregular podcast. You can find us at sipnet.us on Instagram. And we're a varied group of podcasters like the Terrible Terror podcast, Dave's podcast from another world, Dead Hand Radio, the Paranormal Positivity, the Angry Dad podcast, Back Back in in Time time. (laughs) podcast, From the Wastes, and us, Faye Five from Fans. And remember, folks, it may not be the best. It may not be the most popular, but if it's your favorite, then it's good enough for us. Guys, say good night. Good night. Good night. This is Hulk Boy from Hollywood signing off. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>